last few days, once again, I've been very busy for the Call of Duty universe. Not only because we ended up getting an update for World War II, which added Shamrock and Awe and a bunch of other subsidiary content into the game, and not because we also got a little bit of an update for things like Domination Excel and future content within World War II, but also because we ended up seeing more rumors for a Modern Warfare 2 remastered within this upcoming month at the end of April. So Modern Warfare 2 has been on the brain for some people, but what about the extension up until Modern Warfare 3? Now, this video is not going to be serving as anything of a remaster discussion, but instead, I'm going to continue the series we've been doing the past couple of weeks, taking a look at older Call of Duty titles, and this week up on the docket, we have Modern Warfare 3, one of the ones that honestly is probably a game that I have played tremendous amounts of, and back in the heyday, once again, that might have been one of the biggest titles that I just came home and grinded every single day after class. But again, another classic here to take a look at and give you guys a little bit of an update if you haven't played it in a while, what it's still like, what features you might be missing out on if you guys remember them or don't remember them, and anything else scattered in between. So while the gaming world might be looking at Modern Warfare 2 this past week, let's take a little bit of time to take a look at Modern Warfare 3 in 2018. So, Modern Warfare 3 was first initially introduced into the franchise on November 8th of 2011. So, almost seven years at this point in time, about six and a half actually, if you really want to get down to it. But still, even six and a half years later, the game is a fantastic amount of fun that you'll end up having, whether or not you end up going back on your PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 and playing it, or if you just want to remember it fondly for the memories you had back in the day. Sometimes when I go back personally, I don't exactly have as much fun as I used to, whether that be just the good and older fact or there were things that were relevant in everyday play styles that just were not favorable that we tend to kind of block out and only remember the good stuff. Modern Warfare 2 is a good example of that. One Man Army and Noob Tubes, no good in my book, and it's still something you'll come across at every single lobby. And other things like just the connections were awful back then as well. Still, we'll talk a little bit about connection in this video. It's not the worst, but it still is not as good as it is currently. But that said, Modern Warfare 3 offered a lot of awesome things that honestly, I think, for the game at its time, was by and far above the expectations were and offered a great playing experience as a result. One of the big things that I loved was the class system. There was no pick 10 system with this one. Attachments were dictated by proficiencies, a lot of other things fit that classic create a class system, but also offered still a lot of functionality in how you could play individually. And one of the biggest things that I think was perhaps my favorite thing that still stands the test of time to me were the strike packages. When you have the assault support and specialist strike packages, each offered individual play styles that were honestly fantastic. You had the ability to just slay out and not really have to worry about assault kill streaks taking away from your kills if you're going for Moabs with say the support in which you could have a UAV ballistic vest and advanced UAV. Assault was a nice way to end up getting a ton of different kills. The attack helicopter, H6 Overwatch, and Pavlo were fantastic ways to end up getting a ton of kills while also still slaying it out on the ground. But then you also had the specialist strike package, which again was a fan favorite at the time, and I honestly wish it would come back at some point in time. It was fantastic in the way that you could end up picking three more perks as your kill streaks and then getting that bonus pretty much just made you that super soldier then, and it was just anything you could ask for and then a lot more. It was a ton of fun to play with all three different strike packages and again it offered a ton of variation in the way that play could be dictated as a player which is something that offers a lot of different routes for how you can explore the game and that's always a good thing add that in on top of the great choice of weaponry like the acr the m4a1 the scar l the cm901 which wasn't a huge fan favorite but i remember loving that thing back in the day i don't know why just always was a sort of underrated weapon for me you also have the mp7 the p90 the barrett 50 cal the msr all sorts of great weapons, and then you also had secondaries that stood out. While granted, unlike Modern Warfare 2, you didn't have shotguns as secondaries, things like the MP9 were still fantastic. The perk system was awesome with the pro perks as well, offering a slight advantage over the base perks after completing some challenges, and overall it was just a fantastic system. And then when you add in all of that with the game modes and the maps that were classic, it was seriously fantastic. You had a great number of your standard modes, many more than are offered currently at the moment, but then you also had party modes, including infection did drop zone all or nothing and MITD your money in the dank which I might be dating myself but if I'm not mistaken that was actually named in honor of an old school Call of Duty YouTuber named Dank Ops which now that I think about that man his origin series that he did was fantastic but it was a cool little way to include the community with his custom game mode that ended up making it into the actual game itself but then we also ended up seeing things like face off in which there was just so many different ways to play the game granted at its peak player count you had a ton of people playing each individual game 
mode, both standard party and then face off modes and also the hardcore modes as well. But right now you'll be hard pressed to find a lot of those even populated in the slightest with enough for one player, unfortunately, which kind of brings me to where it is today. If you go on and hop on on your Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, Modern Warfare 3 will still be a game that you love to boot up and have a good time with. But again, the big thing that the game has to combat is the player count. It's very low, especially compared to some other titles. Now, we talked about Black Ops having a relatively decent player count for a game that's on the better part of 10 years approaching that now, but unfortunately, Modern Warfare 3 does not have the same active fan base to work with, but it's still a ton of fun regardless. When I was playing around a little bit earlier in the day, capturing some final footage here, it was right around hovering 5,000 players online. And that's something that it was split up evenly then, even more so throughout each of the different playlists. There was about 200 some in some playlists. I think the most that I saw was right around 1,500, 1,600 players, but that was in Team Deathmatch. Everything else was very stagnant. But again, that's the biggest that you'll see. Surprisingly though, some of the party modes are even able to find a lobby. I had a ton of fun with Infected. If you jump on, there's still about, I believe once again, maybe 200 players off the top of my head at that point in time, relatively on average. So you still find a lobby relatively easy. And doing the quick math here off of that, it's about 10 to 11 lobbies that there are players accessible to create. So 18 players, a lot of fun still. And of course the classics like Dome and Village, all are great fun for that mode in particular. But again, you're probably gonna find a lot of your player counts in Team Deathmatch, Domination, Ground War, in fact, that you could possibly throw in on that maybe top five or six game modes that are populated list, but a lot of the stuff is your standard modes. And I think the final one that I saw there was actually a decent amount of players in was Search and Destroy. Other modes like Capture the Flag, absolutely nobody in there. So you'd be searching forever essentially, unless you got lucky. So unfortunately, some of those modes are dwindling down, but that's just how it goes within time. Another big thing if you jump on, and it actually has to deal a little bit with that player count is the servers, because you'll probably notice if you go on, there's gonna be a lot of host migrations. As we've talked about in the past couple of weeks, these games up until this point and a few years after still, were on peer-to-peer -peer connections, which are not that great because there is no central selective location where players can connect to. It's all dependent on somebody else in that lobby if their connection is good enough to host 11 to 17 other people for a match. And if it's not, well, then you're gonna experience the lag as a player on that connection. And so having to constantly switch in and out of different hosts because people can either back out, their connection can't handle it, whatever it may be, will create a little bit of lag, but then also host migrations as well. So servers, unfortunately, still that peer-to-peer -peer system. It's not until a couple of games later, we start to see that hybrid system then transition into a dedicated server system. Another thing that I also feel like you'll pick up on is the time to kill because time to kill in Modern Warfare 3 was hit or miss, I feel like, also really depending on how those servers were and that connection was because there are some times where you'll just get absolutely melted and you're like, how did I die so fast? But then you might turn around and say, wow, why is this person taking so many bullets to finally kill? It's one of those things that it's kind of, once again, hit or miss, but for the most part, gun up and get ready for some gunfights and you'll have a good chance at that. Now, the final thing I really want to talk about in terms of what it's like today is the fun factor because a few titles within the franchise are kind of hit or miss where I feel like I really enjoy this game but then I'll go back and I don't have near as much fun today playing them whether it be for a number of different reasons personally or if they're actually things that we kind of suppress in our memories so that we only see the good things when we think back to it. But Modern Warfare 3 is one of those games where I genuinely had a lot of fun going back and playing it. It was one of the games where I think they kind of got rid of a lot of the BS in the game beforehand of Modern Warfare 2, such as noob tubes, such as a lot of the modding, such as a lot of the hardcore commando lunging. That's still a thing, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as bad. And so when I think about Modern Warfare 3, I feel like it's a more polished off version of a Modern Warfare 2 in a sense, which is again, something that many people will not agree with. But when you take a look at it, there were less things that were air quote broken in that game compared to the older titles, which is again, something that I think is nice and really helps add to it. And again, when you throw in these new modes like Infected, Drop Zone, All or Nothing, MITD, Face Off, all sorts of that, plus the classics that we kind of grew up on, it just makes for a whole big new offering on how the game is played. And when you also take a look at it, we had things back then like Elite in the Vault. Elite was an awesome thing with cool offerings in the way of how DLC worked. You got a bunch of cool free features, behind the scenes content and other awesome stuff just for signing up. And then if you had founder status, you had a bunch of other things, but also it offered new DLC in the way of one DLC offering per month for nine months. So you had DLC map packs one through nine, which offered new multiplayer maps, spec ops mission, face off maps, and all sorts of cool different stuff, which just kept the content 
content coming in a relatively frequent basis. And it was just a lot of awesome stuff to build on top of that. And with the vault, well, that was Infinity Ward's theater mode, a way to store footage and view your friend's stuff. And honestly, kind of breaking away from this a little bit, just a side note, I've always really been interested in this because a lot of the recent titles like World War II, Infinite Warfare, Advanced Warfare, and back have started to push the internal capture card device for a reason why theater mode wasn't actually in the game. It was only Treyarch that really offered this, but we ended up also seeing it in Modern Warfare 3 with the vault. So it was something that was available at that point, but never again seen outside of Treyarch titles. But again, those sorts of things just building on top of that, you have so much more than the previous Infinity Ward title, and there's just so much more to keep you involved with. So for that reason alone, I love the game. It was a lot of fun to go back, and of course, having a little bit of population did help out with this, but overall, the game itself is just a lot of fun. So that said, if you guys have Modern Warfare 3 still, you have your Xbox 360, your PlayStation 3, maybe you need to dust it off, definitely give that a try though and pop it in for maybe about an hour or two or just check it out for as long as you want because it is definitely well worth it if you guys have kind of moved away from it and kind of forgot about what the game might feel like definitely try it out again because it is a lot of fun to revisit. But ultimately, that's where we're going to wrap it up. So, love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What were your thoughts on Modern Warfare 3? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you impartial? Did you play it but not really care all that much? Whatever it may be, feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I love doing these kind of retrospective looks. So, next week up on the table, well, you probably know what that is. Keep an eye out for a Black Ops 2 in 2018. What that is like for next week if you guys are interested in that one. I'm really excited for that one because Black Black Ops 2 is still to this date my favorite title in the franchise probably so I'm excited for that one hopefully you guys are as well but if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like down below and of course if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty stuff like retrospective looks at games like this Black Ops 4 news and information COD World War 2 best class setups tips tricks news updates all that good stuff we got you covered here up on every avenue for Call of Duty if you guys are interested so make sure you hit that subscribe button if any of it interests you and if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter that's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube practically live on on Twitter, so if you guys want to check up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, I'm trying to get more active over there as well. So if you guys want to follow on that front, that link is also in the description. But all that's said now, the boy, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. Mine's been Espresso. Take care and peace.